Good morning, everyone. It's a blessed day to be in the presence of the Lord. Um, I am really excited this morning about the Word of God uh, that He's brought forth. Um, and I want to thank you for joining in with me. This morning, the Word is coming from Acts chapter 27. And it's talking about uh, Paul on his, on his voyage. Uh, he's going to be traveling and he's on his way to Rome. Um, but God has really given me a great revelation um, on that particular story. So we're going to cover that today. Um, but let us go into a word of prayer this morning. Father God, I thank you this morning for waking us up to a brand new day, oh God. Thank you, Lord, just for your presence, oh God, that somehow we tend to take for granted, oh God. But God, I just thank you, Lord, this morning for your presence, for your word, just wanting to spend time and wanting to go away and uh, spend time together, Lord. So. We thank you for everyone that's joining in. We pray, oh God, this morning that you would just guide through your spirit, through the word of God. And let someone hear what your spirit is saying for this hour. Yes, Lord, this world is, is full of trouble, oh God. But you have a word for us, a word for our situation, oh God. And so, Lord, just let us hear what your spirit is saying this morning. We pray for those who are bereaved this morning, oh God, and uh, God, strengthen, oh God. We pray for those who are lost and unsaved, oh God, this morning. God, that this be their day, that they will receive salvation, that salvation will come to their house, oh God. God, we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. And we're going to read, we're going to start reading at verse 27, 9 and 10. And it reads, Now which much, when much time was spent, and when Salem was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be, will be with hurt and much damage. Not only of the landing and ship, but also of our lives. And just even reading in that, you can understand that some of the guys on the ship was, was fasting. They were uh, consecrating, as we sometimes do. Um, uh, whether it be fasting, praying, or, or reading the word, or giving our time. you know. And sometimes... Uh, we are so caught up in religion that we don't hear God and God is actually speaking to us and directing us. And we're busy caught up in, in our um, in our religion that we just can't hear. You know, we don't we don't hear his word. But God has sent the man of word, man of God to, to give word that um, they're they're on a they're on the road for um, for some danger. Um. And so that was uh, verse nine, verse nine and ten. And then let's go to. Um, um, and you got to understand that they will be traveling from uh, place to place. They're going to go through a bunch of little cities, and uh, uh, they're on the ocean, but they're going to be traveling on this boat. Actually, Paul is on his way back to Rome, to his his hometown. Um, and so, um, but he's in, he's in prison 
he's in prison and he also has favor with the Lord. And so this lesson is going to teach us so much this morning. Um, so let's go to, um, let's go to 27 and, um, 30, 33 and 34. We're going to kind of be skipping around. It's a very long chapter, but it's a beautiful chapter. I love this. I love this, um, Actually, let's go to verse 13 first. Let's go to verse 13. It says, And when the south wind blew softly, suppose that they had obtained their purpose. Loose and dense, they sailed close by Crete. That's one of the towns that they were selling. But not long, not long after there arose against it a tempest wind. And a Eurocla done. And that had to have been pretty bad. Um, just to back up a second. Um, our, our title this morning is Eat. E-A-T. Eat. E-A-T. Um, and a backup behind that is before the shipwreck. Eat. So if you don't remember anything else. The word this morning is to eat. Um, and we'll get back to, to verse uh, 14. But, um, you know, we go through so much in this life. Um, and there is no promise that every day would be easy or every day was going to be Sunday. Everything, everything was going to be great. You're going to go through something in life. And if you're not prepared... Um, You'll crumble. Um, but God is, he's given us instructions this morning. When your life is grand and great, and we're talking about the word of God, plant yourself in the word of God. Give your time to the word of God. Out of all the things we give our time to, the word of God is so important because it gives us instructions and in the he gives us directions and it gives us hope and and um, it gives us Jesus and more of Jesus. Um, so um, let's get back to to the word of God. I'm so excited about this word. I just love this word and Holy Spirit. I just want you to guide me this morning. Um it says, but, but, verse 14, but not long after here arose against it a, te a tempest wind called the Eurocladon. And verse 15 said, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her ride. It was out of control. They didn't have to let it go. They didn't have no other choice, okay? Uh, verse 16, and running under a certain island, which is called uh, Clauda, we had much work come, come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so driven. And we'll come back to verse 18. When I was reading this chapter, Yes, I know they're traveling and they're on their way to Rome. But it made me think about life. Um, how we go through life. You know, and again, I, I explained earlier, some days are good and some days are not so good. But it this this voyage made me see life, how we travel through different points in our life. And um, some areas we're not prepared for. Um, but we have no excuse. That's what God is saying today. We have got to eat the word of God. You know, we have three meals a day. Most of us do. Three meals a day. We make sure we're feeding this flesh to keep going. Well, it's the same way spiritually. You have to make sure you are feeding yourself on the word of God. Oh, each and every day. And oh my God, if you're a reader, if you, I mean, you love to read and you can read and you, you grasp things and 
Oh, read the word of God. Some of us slower than others. Uh, we can, you know, whatever. We can just read a, cha a scripture. But take in the word of God and digest it. Swallow it. Uh, because there are going to come things in your life. And if you're not, if you don't have the word of God inside of you, uh, you may crumble in the mist. Or you, the enemy may destroy you because you have you have nothing to 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 fight with. You have nothing inside of you, and that's what the word of God is on today. So again, they're still traveling, and right now it's bad. It's real bad. Um, verse seventeen said, which when they had taken up, they used. Uh, we actually is eighteen, and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. So they pulled over a little bit. Let's let's pull over and let this blow over. Uh, but what happens? Uh, that's fine when you're going through. Uh, uh, you wanna you may want to stop and when you're going through and say, okay, I just need to rest or whatever. But you gotta get started again. Life goes on, and so but you wanna have something that's gonna hold you no matter what comes your way. Yes, you've accepted Jesus into your heart, or you may not have. And that's the first thing I recommend is that you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and receive him today. Um, but you may have, but you just may not be planting yourself in the word of God and, and seeking him the way you need to and spending time with him and reading his word and getting to know him better. You may not be doing that. And sometimes you just, when you're going through, you just think, well, I can just... You know, I'll just lay here. I'll just uh, rest a minute. I'll take a sabbatical. You know, uh, all that's fine and good. But you're going to get started again. And you need something that's going to hold you. And I recommend the word of God today. Um, uh, verse 19, it says, In the third day, we cast out with our own hands uh, the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun no stars in many days appeared. So they waited for days. And no small tempest lay on us. <laughs> uh, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. This was a pretty bad storm. And it was pretty scary. And that's how it is sometimes in life. Sometimes things hit you out of nowhere. Uh, unexpected things. Uh, Where this financial or deaths in the family or people homes burn uh it's just different tragedies and things that we go through um even with our economy one time you know it was a uh, just a great scare you need something to hold you in those times and that's what the this word is on today uh, taking in the word of god now mind you these guys were fasting they were fasting now you think okay well i've been fasting and and, and i've been praying that don't mean nothing's not, you're not going to go anything, go through anything because you're going through your, the religious ritual. That don't mean you're still not going to go through, but you need something that's going to hold you while you go through. Amen. And that's the word of God. Um, so um, verse 21 said, but after long distance, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, sirs, you should have a listen to me. You should hear, hearken to me. You should have listened to me. He told them, if we get started now, this voyage is going to be dangerous. He said, um, he said, uh, he said, not have loose from free. We should have stayed in free and to have gained this harm. And now they're in the middle of danger. Now they're in the midst of danger. And sometimes we get out there and we don't know what to do. Then we want to call on the name of Jesus. Then we want somebody to pray. Then we need a word from God. But if you prepare yourself and get yourself ready before the voyage, before uh, the shipwreck, get yourself ready by taking in the word of God in advance. Uh, in it, number 22, it said, and now I exhort you, be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're going through, it seems like everything else is lost. 
Everything is lost but your life. You can go through things that bad and you can lose everything around you. But if you take in the word of God, take just take it in. You're going to get through it. I guarantee you, been there, done that, and probably got to go through some more. <laughs> but I guarantee you, it works. Um, let's go to... Um, and Paul told them, he said, uh, in verse 25, he said, Wherefore, uh, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God. And that's the first thing. You got to believe God. If he said... You you gonna get through this? You gonna get through it? I know it's hurt. It hurt and it pain. It's painful and sometimes you have to cry all night. Sometimes it's all day, and it seems like it ain't gonna never go away. Oh, long suffering is he? Long suffering is he? Uh, it seems like you you just going through. But if you could just believe God today, it said that uh, it shall be even as it was told to me. God had encouraged Paul that all was going to be well. And none of their lives was going to be harmed. Um, verse 33, it said, And while the day was coming, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that you have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Think about that. When was the last time you read the word of God? So these guys, have been fasting. Now I know that's going without eating and drinking. But these guys have been fasting for 14 days. And hadn't taken in nothing. But what if you hadn't taken in the word of God for 14 days. And you starved yourself from the word of God. Just take a few minutes and think about it. Well Paul is telling them. <laughs> from what I can see in the spirit. Y'all need to eat. Because you're going to need your strength. It's time for you to eat. Religion is good. Uh, I know you've been to the conference. I, I, I know you, you're you walking around with your iPod. And, 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 and. But you need to get into the word for yourself. You need to take it in. Uh, Mama's word was good. Mama's word was good, but you need to get the word of God for yourself. And not only take it in, you need to meditate on it. Day and night, David says, meditate on the word of God. Because um, Paul is warning him. He said, you think it's bad now? No. Where we're headed, now that we're out in the middle of the sea, we got to move forward. We can't turn back now. But it ain't going to get no better. So I advise you now to eat. Read the word of God. Take it in. Don't just read it. Let it bounce off. Take it in. Meditate on it. Let it digest. Mm. And then let it bring forth fruit. In Jesus name. And so uh, verse 34 says, Wherefore I pray you to take some meat. Meat. Some of you still on milk. And it's time for you to take some meat. Paul said, verse 34, take some meat, for this is for your health. You need this for your health. You need this for your strength to get through what you're about to go through. Uh, don't wait. And then, you know, you crying and all is Jesus, God. Do it now. Take in some meat. Take in some, some rich. Something that's going to hold you. And keep you. For this is for your health. For there shall not one hair fall from your heads. Of any of you. If you do this. I don't care what you have to go through. I don't care what you have to go through. What kind of pain you have to go through. And if anybody know about pain, it's me. I don't care what you have to go through. You can go through it in the name of Jesus. Uh, take in the word of God. Feast on it. Make it real to your life. Walk in it. 
<laughs> be a part of it. You're going to get through that. I'm going to get through it. Yes, it hurt. It hurt. It hurt. But you're going to get through. And that's a promise. That's the word of God today. Eat. Eat the word of God. And verse. Uh, let me go back to my tablet. I haven't even been to my tablet for a minute. Um, and then we'll, we'll go back to verse 43 in a second. And Paul, he, he encourages them that God is going to keep them through this. Um, if they just do that, if they just eat, if they just eat the word of God, God is going to see them through. Um, Paul's final destination is wrong. We all have a final destination in our lives. We have a destination. We have a God have a plan, plan and a purpose for our lives, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. He have a purpose and we have a destination. That we're on our way to. And sometime on that destination, on that voyage through life, we, 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 run into some, we run into some turbulence. We run into some things. Unexpected. And, and Lord, it does. It's riveting. And uh, if you've not prayed up, stayed up, and eaten the word of God, it can, it can literally just tear you apart. It can just tear you apart. Um, and we're, I'm going to come back to my tablet in a minute. And we're going to finish um, finish up with some with some scriptures inside the tablet. My mark so I can remember to come back to, to that. But we're going to. And verse 43 says. We're talking about the word. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into into the sea. Now this wreck this this wreck was bad. It was bad. It started tearing up the boat. So imagine you got all these people, I think it was 276. You got all these people in this in this boat, prisoners, and the boat is coming coming apart. So now what do they do? Now, Paul, you, you said God said we were going to be all right. This is bad now. But God, Paul still got faith. You know, Paul was able to get off that boat while he was traveling. That The guard let him get off and go visit one of his friends. And who do that when you're in prison? But that's the kind of favor you can have with God. Um, but uh, verse back to verse 43, 44, it says, And the rest, some... Some on board. Now they they all came out. Um, oh, let's go to thirty five. I had to back up a minute. It says, and when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it he began to eat and that reminds me of the of the lord's supper when he um he took the cup and he said um he said take he said this cup is the cup of my blood which was shedded for you he said and as often as you drink this cup you do it in remembrance of of, of of me and likewise the bread he did take and he break it he, he said this is my body which was broken for you so this this to me represented that the lord's supper um but they did eat and it said then were they all of good cheer and they also took some meat uh and 37 cent, and we were all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the sweat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the island, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into 
the which they were minded, if it were possible to thrust in, thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosened the rudder bands and hoist up the main mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And when fallen into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained un unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with violence and wave. The ship broke all the pieces, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. At least that's what they thought. But the centurion willing to save Paul. He was going to save Paul first and not the rest of the prisoners. But I like verse 44. And when the rest, some, some came out on boards, some on broken pieces. I don't care what you go through and how painful it is and how destructive it may have seemed. You coming out. You may come out on broken pieces, but you coming out. And that's what matters in Jesus' name. I like that. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. They all came. They took boards. Some of them came out. Those 276 people. Some of them came out on boards. Broken pieces. But they all came out. Just as God has promised. And you're going to come out too. Believe God. And know that he's going to bring you out. Read his words. Start reading in the book of John. Read about Jesus' life. Build your faith. Most holy faith. Build it up in the Lord. Um, but you know. What amazed me most, and then we're going to move on to some other scriptures, some to uh, reference scriptures to this story. You know, Paul didn't stop going through. Even when he got off the ship, he stuck his, stuck his hand in, in, uh, in some firewood, and a venomous snake came out and bit his hand. And you know, they was looking at him as if he was going to die. If you could believe me today, I don't care what you go through, you coming out. It ain't enough poison. But the Bible said Paul shook that snake off. And he didn't die either. And he didn't swell up. So that's the God we serve. But you got to believe the word of God, which is where we're going to go next. Now I can go to my tablet because I have some scriptures in here. Reference scriptures, scriptures for you. Uh, let's go to Matthew 7, 24 and 25. That's Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Matthew 7, 24 and 25. And it says, therefore, whosoever... Hear the, these sayings of mine, and do with them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. You got to read the, read the word of God. You got to hear God's word. You got to believe him. And you got to do them and walk in them. And verse 25 says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat up on that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And this rock is Jesus. Um, so, if you believe the word of God, you read the word of God, which is the rock of Jesus. Our rock of ages, which cleft for me. Um, you coming out. And know that, that you're coming out. Uh, then Matthew 7, 26 and 27, it says, And everyone that heard these sayings of mine, and do them not. If you don't do them, uh, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat up on that house, and it fell. And great 
what's the fall of it. So there are consequences when you don't read the word of God and you don't take in the word of God and you don't believe it. There are consequences. Um, so what should, uh, what you must be doing, what you must, let me see what I wrote here. Oh, what you, these are some things you must know during the storm. Um, let's go to first Samuel, uh, 24 and three. Some things you must know while you're going through your storm. 1 Samuel 24 and 3. First Samuel 24. 24 and 3. And it said, And he came to the sheep she coast by the way. Where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Oh, this is just talking about when uh, going in, going into cover. Really, when you're going through your storm, you got to know that uh, God is in there with you, whatever you're going through. Um, staying in the Word of God, but even though you're going through and you're being tossed to and fro. Um, and uh, you you're you're in that you got to know you're in that hiding place with God. It, it's just a belief. It's just in your Noah. You got to know that. Um, and I believe that's why I wrote that there. Um, let's go to uh, Matthew's Matthew's one and twenty three, and basically it's just knowing that uh, God is with you. Just scripture, backup scriptures for you to stand on. You can start reading the Word of God today. That's why I'm giving you, taking the time out to give you scripture. Matthew 1 and 23. And it says, um, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means, which is to be interpreted, God is with you. You got to know and you'll know that God is with you. You got to know that. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. You may be trembling in your boots, but you got to know that God is with you. You just, it just, just got to know. And that was Matthew 123. You just got to know it. Oh. Uh, and let's go to Isaiah 41, 10 and 14. Isaiah 41, 10 and 14. And it reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And 14 says, Fear not, thou, thou warm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, said the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. You just got to know that God is with you. He, God says that so many times that he's with, he's with us all the way through this Bible. He says that. And we got to know that. Um, and he will help you. He will help you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looked like. Uh, you may be living from paycheck to paycheck, and don't I know about that? But God will help you. Come what may. He and you can write a book about it and to and journal. Write down what he do for you when you're going through. Write down how he brought you out. Write it down. And you look back. God got a resume. Huh? He got a resume. And you look back and see what the Lord has done. 
And you, I recommend Jesus. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Isaiah 43 and 1. And it reads. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You belong to the Lord. You belong to the Lord. And he is not going to allow nothing to happen to you. You got to know that in your knower. Um, you belong to God. Uh, you are bought with a price. You have been redeemed. Our Redeemer lives. Um, learning to listen to God is what I wrote down here. Let's go to Daniel 6 and 16. Daniel 6 and 16. I don't want to miss nothing. I saw us looking, trying to make sure I covered everything. Daniel 6 and 16. Daniel 6 and 16. And it says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, who, thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver you. They threw Daniel in the lions in him. But like I just told you, God has a resume. Uh, in the Bible said, um, they look back in there. <laughs> All I can tell you is Daniel came out saved. Uh, read your Bible. Read Daniel. Um, he's gonna, God is going to save you. He's going to bring you out no matter what. It's a promise. There are many, many stories all through this Bible of how God delivered. And he's still delivering today. He's still delivering today. I thank God. He's, he, he delivered me. That's why I'm up this time of morning. Um, he delivered me, and um, that's why I'm here. I'm here to share with you what God has done and to help you and to walk you through your Bible study. Sometimes it's hard to get going, and you just kind of need somebody to guide you along. But that's why I take the time out to, um, it's probably an easier way, um, but I take the time out to, to find the scripture for you. And um, that way you can look at the scripture in your own time. Make sure I'm not telling you any and everything. Uh, um, but I thank God for the word of, word of God today. And I'm going to pray before I let you go. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you, O oh Father, our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Mm. Help us all, O oh God, to come away with you, Lord. To spend time in your word. Allow you to teach us, O oh God, how to... Just teach us, line up on line up and precept upon precept. Just teach us. Teach us how to wait. Not just a spoken word, but teach us how, how God. If you teach us, oh God, as one man of God said, we will be taught. Lead us, oh God, into the path of righteousness, Lord, for your name's sake.
Man's days are full of trouble, oh God. Oh God, but we know that you're going to deliver us out of all of them. You've given us written instructions, oh God. You've spoken your word to us, oh God. Now God, I pray for that lost soul right now that don't know you, oh God. That this day, God, they would come to know you. That salvation would come to their house, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are Emmanuel and that you are with us, oh God. And you said you would never leave us, Lord, and you would never forsake us, oh God. And even David said, all the appointed days of my life, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread, oh God. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you are long-suffering, oh God. And I thank you, God, that you still Jesus today. And you still saving, oh God. And you still raising, oh God. And you still setting free, oh God. And God, somebody don't know which way to go this morning, oh God. Somebody is lost, oh God. And somebody is in bondage, oh God, of, with drugs, oh God, and alcohol, oh God. But Satan, you are a defeated folk. God, I thank you, Lord, for calling people out, Lord, even in this hour, oh God. I'm asking you to order our steps today, God, through your word, oh God. Order our step, oh God. Give us that that we need, God, to get to your word and seek your face, and your face will I seek, oh God. We need you, oh God, this morning. God, I'm asking you to have your way, have your way, Lord, in our lives. Even as we go out this morning and go on these jobs, oh God. And Lord, is the boss don't know you're in the pardon of his sin, oh God. But Lord, we're just asking you, Lord, to let Jesus rise. And every man be scattered, oh God. Let Jesus and let every enemy be scattered, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, you said before the end of time, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord of our lives, oh God. And God, we need you right now. Oh God, oh God, somebody's hurting this morning. Somebody, somebody's marriage, God, is in trouble, God, this morning. Oh God, and we're crying out to you, oh Lord. But you told us this morning there's a word. If we just seek your face, oh God. There's a word, God, and I thank you even on your word yesterday, just ministering, driving down the highway, oh God, just ministering, oh God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you just show up, God. You just show up, oh God. And you said, if we draw near to you, God, you will draw near to us, oh God. If we would just lift up the name of Jesus. You said if you would be lifted up, oh God, from this earth, that you would draw all men unto you, oh God. We're just asking you, Lord, right now, oh God. Even in this hour, oh God. We just pray, oh God. We pray for our political arena, oh God. That this thing stop being about money, oh God. But start being about Jesus and what's right for man and what's right for this country, oh God. God, we just pray, Lord, that you would lift all selfish people out of this thing, oh God. But put some people in there, God, that's just going to be fair to man, oh God, and just going to do the right thing, oh God, for your name's sake, in the name of Jesus, God. And we're asking you to have your way, God, this morning. We need you, Lord. We need you and we're crying out to you. We're crying out to you, Lord. Don't let us go to work today the way we were yesterday. In the name of Jesus, we bind that spirit of frustration that's trying to keep us distracted, oh God. That's trying to keep us from focusing on, on heaven, Lord. On, 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 and focus on these temporary things, oh God, and try to keep us from focusing and putting our minds on heaven, oh God. And Lord, we're just asking you to help us this morning. Have mercy upon us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And God, as we close this morning, God, we worship you.
for you are worthy to be praised. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We know in whom we worship, Jesus. We know who we worship. In every spirit that's not like you, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, ask you, in the name of Jesus, come out. In the name of Jesus, come out of the mind. In the name of Jesus, come out of the thought. In the name of Jesus, come out. In Jesus' name, have your way, oh God. Save us and we will be saved. And we know our Redeemer live in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Carla Barron. If you like to write, you can write at P.O. Box 205, Athens, Texas, 75751. And until next time, may God bless you and have a great day. I love you in the, with the love of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.